Hey, my name is Lance. The Hydraulic Judo Robot is a project that I came up with in 2011, and since then, hundreds of people have built one. I love this project because it'll really prompt you to test and redesign your project over and over again. After each match, whether you win or lose, you'll come away with more ideas on how to improve your design. The idea is to face off with an opponent and try to either flip them over or push them at least halfway outside of their starting square. So I'm going to show you how to make the part that moves up and down and side to side, but as far as the base and grappling arm goes, there's really no right or wrong way to build them. So I'm just going to talk about some of the considerations to keep in mind when you're making your own. Begin building the base by hot gluing four sticks into a square. Then glue a cube with holes onto the center of one of the sticks. Glue on another stick next to that cube. And then glue on three more regular cubes to the sides of the cube with holes in it. These supports are necessary because it will prevent the cube with holes from breaking off when the judo robot is in action. Next, we're going to install an eighth inch dowel into the cube with holes. Make sure to select a dowel that seems pretty thick and strong and is free of defects. Put a little bit of glue into the hole and fit the dowel inside. Okay, set this aside, and next we're gonna work on the pivot column. Hot glue two cubes with holes onto the ends of a craft stick here and here, making sure that the holes line up. Test by putting another eighth inch dowel through them to make sure that the holes are aligned. Then glue on craft sticks to the remaining sides. On one end of the pivot column, glue two regular cubes on opposite sides. Then cut or break two craft sticks in half. Glue a half craft stick piece onto one side of those regular cubes. Then flip it over and glue on two more cubes with holes, making sure that the holes face each other, like this, to begin creating the hinge. Then reinforce these cubes by gluing on the remaining half craft sticks here and here. Now we're going to finish the pivot column by creating a hydraulic attachment point on the other end. Cut or break another stick in half, and then glue that half stick onto the side of the pivot column here. Then glue on another cube with holes onto the end of that craft stick, making sure that the holes here line up with the holes in the column. And glue the other half craft stick onto the other side. Okay, the pivot column is done. Just make sure that the hydraulic attachment point is lined up with this gap that's between these hinge cubes. Okay, now we're going to put the pivot column onto the base. First, cut or break this dowel so that it's about the same height as the pivot column. Then put a washer or a scrap of thin cardboard that has a hole in it onto the dowel here. This is going to help reduce friction between the pivot column and the base. Okay, now put this part onto the base and wrap some tape around the dowel here so that it's too thick to slip back through the cube. Okay, now we're going to finish the hinge. Get a craft stick and glue one regular cube onto one end and one cube with holes onto the other, making sure that the holes are pointing off to the sides like this, and then glue another craft stick on top. Okay, get your remaining dowel piece and thread this through all three of these cubes with holes. Like with the other dowel, wrap tape around the ends to stop it from slipping through. Then just cut or break off the excess dowel. When you're finished, the basic mechanism should be able to move side to side like this and up and down like this. Okay, now we'll create the hydraulic systems. First, cut a piece of tubing that's at least two feet long. If it's too short, then you'll end up tugging and pushing on the judo bot. Take one of the syringes and fill it up all the way with water, doesn't matter how much for now and attach the nozzle onto the tubing. Hold the other end of the tubing over the water and then push water out of the syringe and through the tubing to remove all of the air. Dip the tubing into the water and then refill the syringe up to 10 milliliters. Then, making sure the other syringe is completely empty, attach the other end of the tubing. And then finally, attach one of these syringe adapters onto the end of the plunger. When you're finished, try it out. There should be very little air inside the syringes and tubing. If there's more than like one milliliter of air in one of the syringes, then redo these steps because otherwise the hydraulic systems won't be as powerful. And repeat one more time. Okay, let's attach the first hydraulic system to the base. I recommend rotating the pivot column so that the hydraulic attachment point is within this base square. 
and make sure that the pivot column is pointing straight ahead, not turned at an angle. Then glue a stick onto the base that is lined up with that hydraulic attachment cube. So you can see that this stick and this cube are lined up. Then glue on another stick that attaches the base to this one, just like this, to make this a little bit sturdier. Then glue a regular cube onto this stick. It doesn't have to be very precise. But this next part does require some precision, so watch closely. First, fill up the syringe with the adapter halfway, or 5 milliliters, with water. Then position the syringe onto that cube and move it so that the adapter is just touching this hydraulic connection. And again, make sure that the pivot column is pointing straight toward this side of the base, and not turned at an angle. Then tape the syringe onto the cube and to this base extension by wrapping several layers of tape around it. Don't use glue here, as it's actually kind of important that this syringe can wobble around a bit. Then finally, connect the adapter to this hydraulic connection with a cable tie. Test it out to make sure that you can get a full range of motion and that everything is moving smoothly. You may need to do a little bit of troubleshooting here. For example, the cable tie might get tied too tight, or you may need to untape the syringe and move it slightly closer toward or away from the hydraulic connector. This is the trickiest part of the whole project, so definitely take your time, be patient with yourself, and make sure that this part is working well. The other hydraulic system is much easier to attach. Just position the syringe with the adapter under the arm here, and make sure that this syringe is empty and this arm is pointing down. Then just strap this onto the pivot column with many layers of tape. Attach the adapter to the arm with another cable tie. Then finally, tape the tubing onto this hydraulic connector down here so that it's out of the way. Test it out to make sure that it can raise all the way up and back down. Okay, the basic mechanism is done. So that's how to make the basic mechanism. Now before I get into the base and the grappling arm design ideas, there are a few design constraints that should be imposed on this project. One is that the base of the judo robot must be able to fit inside of a 10 by 10 inch square. And this is because without this constraint, you could just build a massive sprawling base that's like impossible to move. And it's just not really fun for anybody, so keep it to 10 by 10 inches. The second constraint are the amount of materials that you use. I recommend limiting the amount of craft sticks to about 40 and the number of these regular craft cubes to about 10 per robot. And this is because without some kind of material limit, you could just pile on more and more materials to make your robot heavy. That will make it harder to move, and so you're more likely to win, but then it's just a race to see who could make the heaviest robot, and that doesn't inspire very creative ideas or tactics. Okay, so with those two constraints out of the way, let's talk about the base. And there are basically three key things that you need to keep in mind to make a successful one. One thing to consider is the position of the pivot column. If the pivot column is really far forward toward the front of the base, then the robot is going to do these sort of lunging pushes. And this is great if your strategy is to push your opponent out of their starting square, usually by pushing against the pivot column. By contrast, if the pivot column is positioned toward the back of the robot, then it's going to get better leverage from the base, and it's better able to lift up the opposing robot. This can be used to sort of lift and fling the opponent out of their starting square, or even flip them over entirely. And then having a pivot column somewhere in the center of the base is kind of like a balance between the two. Make sure to fill up the entire 10 by 10 inch area, or at least fill it out to the corners. A wider base is going to be more stable and harder to knock over or push around. The second thing is to make sure that the base is pretty rigid. That's why in both of my designs I have lots of interconnecting sticks to make sure that the base can't bend very easily. And lastly, you can add friction points onto the bottom of the base to prevent the judo robot from sliding around. These can either just be globs of hot glue that you let dry, or you can cut little pieces of glue stick and then glue those on. No matter what you choose, make sure to put your friction points at least in the corners of the base, as well as a couple that are directly under the pivot column. So let's say you only added a couple of friction points under the pivot column, then as soon as your robot gets tipped up from the table like this, it experiences very little friction as it's sliding around on these sticks back here. Okay, now let's talk about the grappling arm. So the length of the grappling arm matters. If you have a shorter one, then the grappling tip is going to be closer to the source of power. 
and that will provide better mechanical efficiency. Far as something away is from that source of power, the less mechanically efficient it becomes. However, having a shorter grappling arm means that you might have a harder time reaching your opponent. And by contrast, having a longer grappling arm means that it's easier to reach your opponent. This is especially helpful if the two bots sort of get pushed apart from each other, but your engagements will be less forceful. So it's definitely a balance. You don't want a really short arm that will never be able to reach your opponent, and you also don't want a really, really long one, which is going to be really mechanically inefficient. Okay, and last thing is the design of the grappling tip. If you have a really wide grappling tip, that might be better for catching the opponent's pivot column and pushing them around, but it's also a little unwieldy and it can bump into things and be a little bit harder to maneuver. By contrast, if you have a smaller grappling tip, that might be able to get into just the right position to push your opponent around or even get under their base. But because it is so much smaller, you will have to be more precise with how you're engaging your opponent. One quick tip, you can apply hot glue onto the grappling tip to prevent your opponent from slipping off once you successfully engage them. Okay, so those are three things to consider when you're designing your own robot. The position of the pivot column, the design of the base, and the length and shape of the grappling arm. Now I'm going to show you how to fairly set up and begin a match. First, raise the grappling arm on both robots to the highest position. Place both robots in these 10 by 10 inch squares that are about 3 inches apart from each other. Rotate the pivot column so both robots are facing each other. Then just do a countdown from 3 and begin! A winner is declared when their opponent's robot is either flipped completely upside down and can't ride itself, or when the opponent's robot is pushed more than 50% outside of its starting square, and you may need a referee for that second one. If both robots get pushed around to the point where they can't effectively engage each other, then that's a stalemate and you can reset and begin the match again. If both robots experience a losing condition within 3 seconds of each other, then that's a draw. For example, if both robots get pushed out of their opposing squares under the same forceful motion within a couple seconds of each other, that would be a draw. Okay, last thing, here are a couple of ways that the judo robots can break, as well as how to prevent that and how to fix it. So the number one thing that we'll need fixing are the hydraulic systems. It's really easy to accidentally pull too hard and pull out the plunger. If this happens, here's what to do. First, put the plunger back inside the casing, but don't push it in so far that the air that's now in here gets pushed into the tubing. Then disconnect the tubing, push out all the air and water, empty the corresponding syringe, then just fill the control back up to 10 milliliters and reattach the tubing. If you do get air inside one of the syringes that's attached to the robot, you'll notice that the movements are a lot weaker. For an explanation about why it's so important to have only water inside the hydraulics, definitely check out my other video. But to fix this, here's what to do. First, orient the judo robot so that the syringe nozzle is pointing up. Now when you push on the syringe, all of the air will get pushed out first. The control syringe will be filled with that air, and you can just disconnect it, push out all the air, and then refill it up to 10 milliliters with water. If there's still a little bit of air inside this syringe afterward, just repeat the process one more time. And lastly, the other thing that can break sometimes is the dowel for the pivot column. To prevent this from happening, make sure to select the thickest dowel that will fit inside the cube with holes. And make sure to wrap tape around the top of the dowel here so that the pivot column can't slide up away from the base. If there's a gap between the pivot column and the base so that it can move up and down slightly, then that exposes a little bit of the dowel and creates a weak point where the pivot column can wobble and eventually break. If this does happen, it is fixable, but it does take a little bit of work. First, use a pair of pliers to remove all of these support cubes. The best way to do this is to carefully twist the cubes off of the craft sticks. Then finally, remove the cube with holes that has the broken dowel in it. Remove the broken dowel, then rebuild the pivot column cube and the supporting cubes. And again, find the sturdiest 1 8 inch dowel that you have, glue it into the cube with holes, then cut away the cable tie from this hydraulic connection to free up the pivot column, cut the dowel to size, put a washer over the dowel, slip the pivot column over the dowel, and apply some tape to the top of the dowel, again making sure that it's as close to this cube as possible so that the pivot column cannot slide up and down on top of the dowel, which will expose a gap here at the base. Then just reconnect the hydraulic system. You don't have to recalibrate the syringe. Okay, that's all for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.